Hey guys, Waifugate here, bringing you another build guide. This time we'll be going over the auto bomber I used to farm up doctors and burial chambers. Thus far, it's been quite the treat blasting through maps and seeing everything shatter. I've dropped 5 doctors and 550 maps with this build. It isn't a good league starter, since it requires a budget of it at least 7 to 10 exalts, but the ceiling is high, so if you enjoy min maxing, it might be just the right build for you. Also, if you're a beginner, it might not be the easiest build to tackle. There's a lot of little things that you might miss in order to make the build feel solid, but I'll try covering all of that in this guide. Now, starting off with mechanics, this build requires a hefty amount of base crit. This is why I chose Assassin over the other ascendancies. I think Elementalist could be great given a base crit Watcher's Eye, your talent and a shaper chest with socketed spells have a 2% extra chance to crit. That being said, that's a much higher budget than what I'm comfortable for uh, with getting the auto bomber off the ground. 2020 gems are also vital uh, in order for the build to feel fluid, even in lower tier maps, especially if you're on a 5 link. On top of that, Assassin offers a 100% more crit chance. For enemies on full life, and the same bonus applies for enemies on low life. This makes the build way more consistent when you first shield charge into a pack and when the heralds are chaining together. Basically what happens is you shield charge into a pack and crit which causes Cosprey's Malice to proc Glacial Cascade. After this, the enemy that shatters is both shocked and frozen, causing both heralds to start chaining together. From this point on, some of the perpetual chaining between the heralds happen from Herald of Thunder critting and causing things to shatter, which causes Herald of Ice to shock, which refreshes Thunder and so on, thus giving its coined named Auto Bomber, since pretty much everything is automated after that first shield charge. Now that we've covered mechanics, let's jump into the gear. Concerning the helmet, you can go Light Poacher, which is good, especially if you're doing a 5 link in conjunction with Essence Swarm and Hatred. Uh, this improves our Glacial Cascade damage, and it also improves the Light Poacher projectile damage. This will help you clear and make up for the loss of one of those damage links on your Herald of Thunder. But if you don't want to do that if you don't want to do light poacher if you don't like it for some reason there are other options such as a shaper helmet with increased aoe um, innervate and a crit chance to socketed spells i think that that would be better late late game anyway if you could push the damage in other ways i think that light poacher will eventually fall off in damage um, but we'll go over details uh, concerning this, concerning Light Poacher and the links that I have set up in it and such later on in the video. With your shield sl slot, Esh's Mirror is pretty much your only option. It gives you 1 to 10 flat lightning damage for each enemy that you've killed recently, uh, shocked. So what this means for us is that it increases our Herald of Ice damage, it increases our Herald of Thunder damage, and global flat damage like that is pretty rare, so we kind of need this. And it also increases Glacial Cascade damage, it just improves their damage overall. The chest piece, the coming, uh, the coming Calamity, there we go, the tough one, it's a tongue twister. But with this, this is our only chest piece option for Assassin. If you were Elementalist, you could do something else, but we're Assassin, so this is the chest that we're going to use. This makes it so that no matter what, our mana reservation for heralds is always 45%. So that means we can stack it with as many supporting gems as we want um, without worry. That's pretty much all it offers. It also gives us two levels to our herald gems, which is huge for our damage. Um, you can't function with the build having like level 19 or 17 gems even. So that sort of gives you an idea of how important gem levels are. So our only option for a chest piece right here. With our gloves, these are pretty flexible, but I enjoy having an, at least the insanity roll. I would recommend that. Um, here, I used to have a pair of gloves that gave additional accuracy, and I mean, this is more towards gem link stuff. We'll go over details. 
Uh, same thing with the Frenzy Charge on Kill. It let me drop Ice Bite and Light Poacher. But we'll go over that with, with uh, the Gem Link setups. But pretty much here, the only thing required is to have uh, the more attack speed roll by using an Essence of Insanity. Next, we'll go over the boots. We've got Goldworm here. These are my favorite uh, choice for the slot. This gives us some quantity, and since our move speed is ridiculous with Insanity Roll Gloves, we don't really need to worry about much else. This pretty much, I use this to uh, saturate the item drops, make it so that we have more six sockets on the ground, more Orb of Alchemies, stuff like this. Uh, I enjoy running them. They also, I also have the boot enchant here, which is pretty good. Um, I would highly recommend that as well. As far as the rings, we kind of went over Essence Swarm. This allows us to reserve mana for Hatred without uh, messing with our mana too, too much here. And it just gives us more damage on Glacial Cascade, Light Poacher. Um, but that's going more into the gem links. So just Essence Swarm. And then here we have a Diamond Ring with Essence Mark on hit. The base of the ring isn't that important. You can actually use this to cap your reses if you need to. If you don't have you know, good glove rolls for reses, you can pick up 30, 40 res here pretty easily. Um, other than that, it just gives flat life between the strength and the max life roll, and that's it for that. Belt, we have the headhunter. You don't need headhunter. Um, I know there are a lot of memes about, lol, nice budget build, Headhunter. Uh, you can use Bisco's Leash and it's just fine. I used Bisco's Leash up until like a few days ago, until I bought my other three Doctor cards and it was fine. The Rampage is actually really nice for move speed. And sometimes when you don't hit, hit that haste buff right off the bat, Rampage can feel pretty good anyway. Concerning the amulet, we have... Our amulet's pretty jacked. Uh, we've got a Skull Pendant Onyx amulet that has flat life, 10% quant, 28 cold res, and an open suffix and prefix. So it's pretty versatile. I picked this up for 7x. Um, it was a pretty good deal. But I would recommend a 6% quantity amulet or Abyssos before you can afford the base to either craft your own quantity amulet or to buy one. Uh, reason being is Biscos is generally cheap, and I think that Biscos, uh, if you have a 45% quant roll, is more effective than a 6% roll on the Shaper amulet. The Shaper amulet and Biscos, I think, uh, I think that the Shaper amulet's a little bit better with how I've been scaling my maps with sextants and whatnot. If I had Breach, Biscos might be more on point because of the amount of normal monsters that come swarming in from those Breaches, but almost all of your sextants, if you look at them closely, increase the amount of magic monsters or give you magic monsters such as uh, you know poison monsters, lightning monsters, fire monsters, etc. You've got... Um, and then you've got the actual like 30% increased pack size of magic monsters and stuff. So I feel like Bisco's uh, collar is a little weak right now. If you can't afford any of those options for quantity, I recommend a rare amulet with life, crit multi, reses, whatever you need stats. Like if you need dex for Cosprey's Malice, I know that can be a bitch. Um, you know, you've got to do that. And then that moves us into Cosprey's Malice. Uh, you know, as far as the gear is concerned. Um, you know, just, just look for that 14% attack rule. It's about the only thing that matters a lot. You can try to get the added cold damage to spells as well, but I would just worry about getting the 14% the attack speed. It might be cheaper buying a, like, 6 to 7 C cost breeze and then divining it once or twice to get a decent roll. I'd settle for 13 if you were, if you were divining and you were on a budget. Moving along to gem links. So our first one is going to be Herald of Ice, added lightning, increased AoE, and increased crit strikes. Now I said that we would go into things, uh, into more detail on things concerning the links in this section. So your options for Herald of Ice would be if you had a Shaper Helmet with increased AoE, uh, Innervate, and such, like, you know, extra gem links, you would replace increased AoE with Ice Bite for an easier Ice Bite engine. Um, and then with Light Poacher, we've got Fork, 
Master Parage, and GMP, right? If you didn't have uh, Frenzy Charge on hit, uh, Frenzy Charge on kill gloves, and your Herald of Ice wasn't providing you with uh, Frenzy Charges, you need to make up for that somehow. So I take out Fork and I put an Ice Bite up top here, and it gives you a pseudo Frenzy Engine. It's not the most consistent. If the density is kind of bad, it's not going to keep up. Uh, but it's better than nothing, so that's what I do there. But yeah, just adjust your links based on what you have in your helmet here. And um, for me, for me, I go Light Poacher, and then I put my Herald of Ice just in Gold Worms. Uh, for this, you can do the Jeweler's Trick. If you guys aren't familiar with that, there are a few videos out there for it. Um, you start out by going, like, you know, at least two blue in your item. It'll roll your first two sockets. Then you go to your bench, and you say at least three sockets. And if it doesn't hit blue, you degrade it down to two sockets on the bench. Go up to three again until you hit your off color that you want. And then you keep repeating that process. You can get four off colors pretty cheap. Uh, it's generally cheaper than just paying for chromatics. Um, in case you're wondering how I got that. I know a lot of people ask. So our other gem links. We've got Herald of Thunder with increased critical strikes, added lightning, added cold, and lightning pen. Here, the sixth link depends on your setup. If you have a level 21 Herald, sometimes you can replace, uh, what I would use is increased critical damage if I was struggling for damage. You can use increased AoE after your damage is there. If your damage isn't there, take out increased AoE, put a damage gem in there like increased critical damage. Um, especially, and if you're on a five link, this is the thing that you take out, the increased AoE slash, um, uh, increase critical damage. That's what you do. You're on the five link. And then gloves. These are these are one of the tricky ones. So this depends on your gloves that you have. If you just have an insanity roll, and that's all you have, just insanity with some life, with some reses, you go shield charge, fortify, additional accuracy, and faster attacks. If you have gloves that give you additional accuracy, you can replace additional accuracy with increased critical strikes. And that will make your shield charge feel more consistent, especially against single target. Um, but yeah, you just have to adjust to your gloves here with what you have. Like, see, this is also going back to the light poacher setup. Now, since I have a 6% chance to gain a frenzy charge on kill, I don't need Ice Bite up here, so therefore I get another damage support to make that clear feel better on Light Poacher. You've just got to adjust. There's no, this is the best setup. It has to be, this is the best setup for my situation with a lot of these links. So you just have to, you just have to adapt. Um, and then here we've got Lightning Golem. Um, this is preference. This is your preference slot. Uh, you can have Lightning Golem. You can have Flame Dash. You can have Vol Breach if you're rich enough for it. I'm um, still not rich enough for it. Um, and you can also just have a normal portal gem if you don't feel like carrying around portal scrolls, and I think that's fine as well. I use Lightning Golem just because I like the clear speed a little, but I have flip-flopped a little and tried out Flame Dash for certain layouts or portal when I got tired of buying the scrolls, so this is pretty much just up for grabs. Here we've got Vol Haste and Increased Duration, pretty standard, it's pretty decent. Um, just helps your clear speed slam it when you when you feel like it during the maps. Um, with Cospreys, we've got Glacial Cascade, Physical to Lightning, and Conk Effect. Now here I use Physical to Lightning because of my OCD mainly. And what I mean by that is on the skill tree when I have elemental damage like this, um, I want it to apply to all of my skills, all of everything that I'm doing. And when I plugged this into POB, it was kind of hard to beat out anyway as far as damage effectiveness. It was like maybe a 4% difference on another gem. Like it was like hypothermia, I think, uh, if the enemy was chilled. And it's like, I'd rather just have it all elemental so that it scales well. And, um, you know, my OCD. Uh, and then as far as the Essence Worm is concerned, you want to get a Hatred, preferably 21. I haven't spent the cash on it yet. Um... Like, I, I just, I want to save my exalts for, like, 21 uh, added lightning, 21 added cold before I spend on hatred 21. So those are my priorities there. 
and then we've got flasks. So flasks are sort of part of the gear. So you've got Aziri's Promise. This is a pretty terrible roll, I think. Yeah, I could get a 2015 and it would be good for a Glacial Cascade. But either way, it's Leech that's not like tied down to you killing something, so it's sort of nice. Uh, I'm not sure if I hit the Leech Cap anyway, um, even when I just have my Boot Enchant, so it's just nice supplemental Leech. And it gives us a nice damage burst. I've got a Stib Knight of Warding. Um, I want an Experimenters. My preferred for most, most flasks are Experimenters and then whatever I want. So this should be an Experimenters of Warding. Um, Quicksilver of Adrenaline. I, I prefer Experimenters over Alchemists. I know a lot of people like Alchemists. But sometimes I'm bad about backtracking and I want to pick up something and then I'm walking a lot. And um, I just like my shit to last a little bit longer, so maybe if I go to pick something up, I can shield charge backwards and still have my bonus and my flask. So it's just preference there with your um, with your affixes, but definitely adrenaline. Um, diamond of heat, so you know, pretty standard. You don't want to get frozen. Uh, the lucky crits help us be more consistent with our you know engine and whatnot. And then we've got the Chemist Silver of Staunching. So this is the only one where the affix really matters. You need a 23% reduced charges roll or higher. And then, you know, bleeding or whatever you want. Like these, these aren't one for one. Like you could have your bleeding on your diamond as long as you have all of your affixes together. It doesn't matter where they're really at. So now we'll go over the Ascendancy, the Skill Tree, um, all of that stuff. So... It is a vital, super, super duper vital that you take Ambush and Assassinate before you take Opportunistic. Now this looks really good on paper as the thing that you should take because it's movement speed and it's damage against rares and we do struggle against that. We do struggle single target. But this is so vital to our engine for the Heralds to chain to have a higher crit chance on guys that are on full life and to crit and cull those guys that are on low life. This is super vital. You need to take this uh, Merc Lab and take this Uber once you can. Super vital. Um, other than that, you go Unstable Infusion, Deadly Infusion, Ambush and Assassinate, and then Opportunistic. And um, yeah, so that's, that's that for the Ascendancy. That's super important, though. I can't stress that enough. The build will not feel good without that. Now, for Pantheons, I go Soul of Lunaris, which gives us movement speed, which is nice. And also physical reduction, which is something we don't mitigate a lot uh, in other places. And then I go Soul of Chiraki. So I use this just to mitigate this Chaos Clouds. I've been sort of lazy about getting the uh, Pantheon bonus by going to kill the bosses and whatnot with the Divine Vessel, but this is just really nice. It's just quality of life. If you prefer something else, it's fine. Uh, they're pretty flexible, right? Like stun immunity is nice. Um, you know. Also, the 10% uh, the chance to avoid projectiles is super good. I, I really do want to get that. Because a lot of times you go to charge in and like a bunch of chaos spitters end up uh, KOing you before you get a chance to leech or anything. I think that's important. Um, as far as bandits go, I went with Alira because as you can see, my reses are pretty tight. I've got a little extra on lightning, but you know, that won't really last. I'm actually not capped right now. I have the wrong craft on this. So like I could recraft this, uh, for, uh, cold lightning. I think I was using this on another character is the thing. So, um, but yeah, you just replace the fire cold on this. You, you balance out your reses. It's fine. This character's reses are, are completely fine. Um, I just forgot to recraft that. And what I was going with, what I was going toward with that was Alira ends up giving you 15% all res and crit multi, two things that we really want with the build. So. And then as far as the tree is concerned, I'm not going to go into detail on this too much. Instead, I'll provide a paste bin below, um, but I'll explain some of my choices here. The paste bin below will also include a leveling, uh, a few leveling trees inside of it uh, that will show you how to level as a freeze pulse assassin. 
if you don't have poets pens or aberth tubes if you have those sets you probably know how to level uh, in which case you're fine and you don't need those trees anyway regardless those will be in the links below it'll also link you to my build page in case you want the actual written guide for this build for more details on it maybe something i didn't cover here i've covered in the written guide so the tree here you'll notice that i don't pick up power charges this is because I have a watcher's eye for crit chance. I don't need the extra crit chance here as much, and instead I spread for quality of life stuff like Ballistic Mastery, which gives us 20% projectile speed, frees up points for Sniper, which is more projectile speed, and you can see I invested a little bit until the Light Poacher clear, just because it feels really good in those low tier maps. Um, other than that, I just have Abyss Jewels. Uh, some of these I crafted, the other ones I... Uh, I bought you know for like 20 c i think this one was like 20 c i got a decent deal on it just a little bit of life some reses some crit multi and basically what you're looking for with these jewels is a combination of attack speed crit multi and life and reses if you absolutely need them um i also have uh yeah yeah, so I was about to say I also have an onslaught one, but I haven't quite gotten that together yet. But I crafted this one when I was doing jewels. Uh, best base to go to craft these if you want to craft them is an eye level. Where is it? It'll be an eye level. Oh, not the hypnotics. Uh, searching eye, I believe. Yep, so this one right here. So you want an eye level 82 when you craft these. Eye level 82 will give you the maximum life roll and then you can roll crit and crit multi or attack speed if you've crit recently, attack speed global, all kinds of stuff that you can roll in these jewels but I've crafted for a few hours here and there blowing probably I don't know 300 chaos on them and I ended up with a few uh, exalt jewels like things that are worth at least an exalt or above but I only ever hit the one mod here so I think I got lucky. But other than that, you go for stuff like Alchemist for Flash Duration, AoE, because that's super important. That's why we come all the way down here for that nice, juicy AoE. Just makes the build feel a lot better. And then here we go Crit Multi. So if you're using the budget version, you're going to want a Pure Talent Jewel. Uh, pure Talent gives you 0.5% crit chance if you are touching Assassin. And it's also going to give you 25 stats if you're touching the beginning of Scion. You can even spec three points here to get 5% pen from uh, Templar, which is nice. It's, it's just quality of life. But, you know, using these three points, that could get you more life or something else that you might be in more need of. And you're just going to play it by ear as far as that's concerned. Uh, but I will, like I said, I'll have the skill tree and everything with details below. But that's pretty much what you're looking for. I've had a ton of fun playing this build so far. I've swapped from Burials to Haunted Mansion to level a bit, uh, mainly for the density. Headhunter is way more fun in a map packed full of rares. Right now I have Elder Shaper Flip going for both Haunted and Burials, so I can freely swap between them anyway, so if I feel like farming the Doctors I can, if I feel like just leveling for a bit, I go to Haunted Mansion. Um, I can show you guys my Atlas for that real quick. Uh, so here we spawned Elder right on shore. And since Haunted Mansion is right here, it's on the outskirts, so even if Shaper fucks around with this area, it's not so bad, like Haunted Mansion will still, 9 times out of 10, be affected by Shaper or Elder. And then here, I focused on making Elder kind of fat over here so he doesn't just break randomly. Like I might do this map, for example, to make it so that he can't cleave and break this off. And then here, I can just flip-flop as well. I just put a sextant here and here. Um, and speaking of that, like how I roll my spider, or how I roll my burial chambers, right? Um, I go Alk, and then I vol it after I reroll dead mods. So I check for like cannot regen, just because I hate that, not because it's a dead mod, I just really don't like it, I forget about it sometimes. And I end up not being able to shield charge and having to eat a, t a town portal to get my flasks back and get my mana going again. So I prefer to reroll that, and then uh, status immunity, uh, status ailment resistance, pretty much like 60% chance to avoid status. So if you go to your stash, 
and you're typing in maps here and like let's say we have a burial chamber you can go like this and go 60 and this will reveal anything with the quotations of 60 on it at burial chambers tier level and haunted mansion since they're both yellow maps will only ever roll 60 percent ailments unless you corrupt it and then sometimes it rolls the lower mod for some reason i don't know why in that case it'll be 30 and you can check for that too by doing the same method and this will just highlight any ailment maps uh that might be there oh see right here it's just showing us uh 30 8% crit multi and the other thing. So you'll have to sort through a lot if you want to go for that. Usually 30% ailments isn't bad anyway. Um, but yeah, I'm rocking a 112 Atlas bonus, which is more than enough to sustain in burial chambers. What you want to do is you want to unbonus out of all of your T8 maps aside from shaped burial chamber, and then debonus any T9 maps. Uh, you can have a shape T10 if you want to. If you're going for a full blown out atlas just for burial chambers, just that's the only map you want to do, you can spec T10s uh, through 16s. But if you're interested in switching off burial chambers eventually, I don't recommend that because it costs a lot of money. Uh, lots of lots and lots of sextants, and they're expensive right now. So I, I highly disagree. Like I, I don't recommend that if you plan on changing your atlas. In the foreseeable future um and then what i do with mine so no no t8s no t9s a uh, shape t10 and then i go 12 through 16 i spec I, I uh finish them all out i fill them out and then i also do shaper and any unique map i can get my hands on so like you know four joys vinter square anything anything that i can do to help the bonus out and i use two sextants here elk and then volling. The reason why volling is good is because it gives you 30% quantity if you hit a unit map. All unit maps do that. If you pair that up with a sextant, you get 60%, 60% increased quantity, which is insane. Uh, the other things that can happen when you go to vol your map are it can brick the map completely uh, or make it so that you can't run it. Like, you know, um, normally, but like the thing is like, we don't have that many dead mods, right? So bricking it uh, usually means going plus one to shaped relic chamber. Um, I have bricked many, many relic chambers, as you can see here. Um, but generally speaking, only 10 maps will brick out of your 60. I usually roll 60 up and then I, you know, vol them all. 10 of them are unrunnable on, on average. Like sometimes I have to craft one or two maps. So like 10 to 12 maps that you have to take out. Um, but overall, you, you still over sustain on maps. I still have maps to sell. Like I have all of these and I have a 2C folder here with so many burial chambers. Like you just sustain if you have your Atlas set up and you're rolling those juicy 100% quant maps. And um, what also when you vol, you have a chance to go eight propped, which means that the map has eight properties. And that can make it so that the bonus, the quantity goes from like, you know, a 40% map to an 80 or even a hundred percent map. And that's just crazy. Like if you compare that to chisels to the 20% guaranteed, um, it's just not worth it to me. That's why I like to vol and go. But yeah, if you guys have any questions concerning the build, um, I stream most days for at least six to eight hours. Um, and I start around midnight Pacific time, give or take like an hour. I usually try to make sure I have food and all of that stuff. But no matter what time I jump on, I stream for eight hours. So if you count from midnight on, you know, like you can probably catch me. It's pretty easy. Um, but also, if you have any questions, you're feel free. You're free to um, make a comment below, too. So feel free to do that. And if you guys try out the build, I hope that you enjoy it. And, you know, good luck on the doctor drops, because that's probably what you're going for if you're here. <laughs>